Hey guys, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome to our new drum mixing series. In this series I'm going to show you how I mix my drums because I've been getting a lot of questions from guys at the YouTube channel and uh, forums and stuff. In the first couple of episodes in this series I'm going to discuss Steven Slade drums and the processing I'm doing on those. In this first episode we're going to talk about the David Bendeth pack. It's a very good pack. It's extremely punchy and it can sound amazing in the mix. Before we go into that, I'd like to ask you to hit subscribe and follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio so you can stay up to date on all our videos and other demos. So as you can see here, we have Steven Slade drums loaded in Cubase 8.5 and uh, the samples that I'm using in this session are the kick with the plastic beater, snare number one, which is the high pitch snare, uh, just the four toms that are in this pack, the hi-hat, uh, two crashes, the ride, uh, the splash is actually from a deluxe pack because uh, the David Bendeth pack doesn't have a splash. And then uh, the China as well. So there aren't a lot of options in this pack, but they really sound good. So I recommend that you try them out. I must say that these samples take processing very well. So you can go pretty extreme with uh, processing on those, especially with EQ. So the raw samples have a lot of mid frequencies in them and uh, they take cuts in the mid region very well and boosts in the high and low regions too. I programmed some drums so you can hear all the drums in action with the processing on, so let's just take a listen. Alright, what a great pack. There's a lot of energy in these samples. They have a lot of punch and they sound very alive. Probably is also interesting to listen to those drums dry without processing, so let's do that. Here we go. So as you can hear, there's quite a difference. Here's a small section again with the processing to hear the difference clearly. We're gonna start at the master fader because I am doing some processing there. This is gonna influence how all your separate drums sound, so I recommend you start here just as I'm doing if you want the drums to sound like this. I have a limiter set up here. Then before that we have the AOSIS Air EQ set up. It's doing some subtle boosting in the high end. Uh, this is just adding some clarity and nice air to the overall mix. I've been doing this since recently and I found that this really helps my mixes out. So uh, I do recommend that you try this as well. And I also recommend that you try to do this before you start mixing. So you mix into this. And I have a little bit of low shelf going on here at about 20 hertz, just to cut out some excess low end and rumble that we don't need. All right, so that's that. Then of course we have the virtual tape machine set up for warmth. All right, and then of course the VBC rack. These are the settings that I like to use usually on rock mixes. This is doing the gain reduction, and I have it set on the CLA Rock Drive setting. Then in the virtual mix rack, I'm doing some trimming. In this case, all my VCC channels are in a group, and uh, for this mix I'm using the 4K G setting, which I like, and the Revival plugin as well for some thickness and shimmer. Okay, let's take a look at the drum bus. So we have two plugins set up here, the virtual mix rack and FG Gray. Uh, let's start off with a virtual mix rack. It only has one plug-in on, which is the Monster. I think I just loaded up the drum group Smasher and it sounds really good. Let's do a quick AB. Yeah, 
so this plugin can add a lot of great energy and punch to your drums. I love this on the drum bus. I really love it. So if you haven't tried this one of your drums, please do so because it's just great as you can hear. Let's move on. Next up we have the FG Grey. This one's here only for about 1 dBs of gain reduction and just to uh, glue the drums together a little bit. Let's do a quick AB. So it adds some nice punchy glue. All right, let's head over to the single channels. All right, let's solo the kick and take a listen. Man, that sounds punchy. I really love this kick drum. It's awesome. Now let's take a listen without processing. Alright, so you can hear that the difference is quite big. This is how I have everything set up. At the moment I'm uh, experimenting with a new setup. I have two uh, MIDI controllers set up, which I like to use to control the quick controls in Cubase. I'm trying to get used to a more hands-on approach. That is why there is a trimmer here. Just in case I want to lower the volume of a track that goes into all the saturation units, such as the virtual preamp collection, the virtual console collection, and the virtual tape machines. Or if I want to drive them even more, I can push them all. This goes into the virtual preamp for some very subtle coloring. I like to use the virtual preamp collection on all my tracks because it always sounds better with them on. Alright, this goes into the virtual tape machines again. These are the settings that I'm using. Then we have the virtual mix rack set up. Let's see what I'm doing here. Of course the virtual console collection. Then we have the FGS here which I love for EQing drums and especially for cutting out frequencies. I'm going quite extreme here, as you can see. I'm cutting 15 dBs of low mids at about 350 Hz. And I'm also cutting out the lows under 30 Hz. Let's take a listen to what this is doing in AB. So that's a huge difference there, and I love what it's doing. It's removing all the boxiness from the kick. It just makes it sound more modern and full. Then next up we have the Custom Series Lift, which is actually one of my favorite processors from Slate. And uh, especially for drums, I love it a lot. What it's doing on the kick drum here is just adding some nice high end. Let's compare. Then next up we have the Monster set up again, uh, this time on the big kick preset. It just makes the kick come alive a bit more. Let's AB. Again, I really love what this thing is doing. And then finally uh, I'm using the Aosis Air EQ here for some surgical EQ. I'm cutting out some boomy low mids. For all my kick drums, especially in metal and rock music, I like to search this area for boomy and boxy frequencies and cut them out. This can make your kick drum a lot more punchy and tight. Let's uh, AB. Just gonna boost it. That's all for the kick drum. Let's move on to the snare. Let's solo it and take a listen. And now without processing. Okay, so I'm sending the snare drum to a drum reverb and I'm using LX480, just adding some room to the snare. 
After that, I have some a bomber set up. So that's all that that's doing. The mix knob is set at 100% and this is also being sent to the drum bus. Now uh, we have the same setup as the previous channel, trimmer and the virtual preamp. Virtual tape machines. This is the same for each channel. Then the virtual mix rack. Again, I'm cutting some low mids, actually at the same area as with the kick, only a much more subtle amount, so I'm only doing about 3.3 dBs of cutting. Let's listen. Then we have the, the monster set up again, which also works great on snare. And uh, I also just picked out a preset. It's called Snare Slammer. And yeah, it uh, does just that. It slams the snare. Let's AB. Much better with it on. <laughs> Amazing plugin. And next up, I'm using the Air module from Aosis. This is adding a lot of nice crispy high end to the snare. Let's AB. Again, much better with it on. And finally, for the snare, again, I'm using the Aosis Air EQ. This time, I'm cutting out some nasty ringing frequencies. They don't necessarily sound bad, but uh, but I prefer the snare without. I'm really notching them out, as you see here. Let's A-B. So when I turn the plugin off, you can really hear um, the ringing of the snare and it's getting emphasized by all the processing that I'm doing, so in this case I like to cut that out. Okay, that's all for the snare. Let's move on to the toms. The toms in this pack sound really unique, and they sound very punchy. Again, uh, the toms are also being sent to the drum reverb bus for some extra air. I don't have a lot of modules set up here. Just an FGS for cutting. Again, I'm cutting a huge amount of mids here at um, about 530 hertz. And I'm adding some air at about 9K and about 3 dBs. I'm also cutting out some excess lows at about 47 hertz just to remove some low end rumble. Let's do a quick AB. So they sound a lot punchier with the EQing. Then we have FG401 set up just to add some glue and cohesiveness to the toms. It's not doing a whole lot, only about 1 dBs of gain reduction, slow attack and fast release. That's all for the toms. I'm not doing anything on the hi-hat other than some coloring from the virtual preamp, virtual tape machines and the virtual console collection. Next up we have the overheads. I'm not doing a lot here. Uh, I'm basically just cutting out some high end with FGN here just to remove a little bit of harshness and smoothing things out a little bit with uh, the FG401 again set on the overheads preset. The presets uh, for the Slate plugins tend to be very good so don't be afraid to try them. Let's take a quick listen. This is just here to keep everything in check, basically. And then finally, the room channel. In this case, first up I'm removing an unwanted frequency with uh, the AOSIS Air EQ. Let's listen to what this is doing. 
Just as with the snare channel, this is just here to remove some ringing from the snare. And finally, the virtual mix rack again. The main thing that I'm doing here is using the Monster for some really nice extreme compression on these room mics. Drum room mics take extreme compression very well, so uh, let's AB. <laughs> So once again the drums sound way better with the monster on. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thanks.